Hi, Chris Green is joining us today. He is the Amazon guy. He's gone from seller to service provider to teacher and has really helped tons and tons and tons of people. It's in the thousands now. It's in the, th right? you need like, like one of those billboards like McDonald's with like, like a little Chris, yeah, how many people like served each, yeah, right exactly. It, it is, it's a little humbling to, to think about how many people like I've connected with and here, you know, we're at another event and there's just, like people come up like you helped me get started and then like I did this and it's like, I didn't realize, I didn't really mean to do that when I got started. You know, like I was selling on eBay back in the day and then I got into Amazon. And then I got into FBA, which everybody knows FBA by now. It's a decade old, believe right. it or not. Right, yeah. And uh, really early adopter with that. I was an early adopter of Amazon Prime, so I kind of saw how FBA and Prime work together from like a buyer and seller mm -hmm. perspective. So I was like, I'm all in on this stuff. And at the time, there was no software. So yeah. I, I had software made just for me. Then I became a software provider, let other people use the software. And then to help people use the software and get started selling on Amazon, I was like, I got to write like this big guide. So I wrote a guide, published it as a book, and now I'm an author. And I'm like... I'm kind of using all these different Amazon platforms, and now there's things like Merch by Amazon, where I can design T-shirts and put them up. I put up videos. I used to have a, a wrap, an MP3. I remember was that. Yes, I remember your wrap. Music. Yes, uh huh. It only sold one time to me. I just wanted to see if it worked. I didn't expect anybody to buy it, but the fact that I could publish my music, and now we have Amazon Video Direct. Okay, now so we, hold on, so hold on. Let's go through. We're on too many, We're on too many things yeah. here. So that, that's that's Amazon. That's so, the entrepreneur's dilemma. So Chris, let's go through. I love hearing you list all the different ways that you can make money on the Amazon suite of platforms. Let's call it. That's a so, good way to call it. Sure. So you've got, of course, selling stuff on FBA. Selling, selling stuff. Selling widgets. Yeah. Hopefully with FBA. With FBA or with, I mean, there you don't are people. Have to. You can ship your own there's stuff. people who do hazmat on purpose. They yeah. have hazmat and they just merch it for like nail polish. They have hazmat sellers. prime now. They have hazmat. I prime. finally ordered nail polish. It took forever to get here, but it did come prime. Let, <laughs> let's see it. Wait, I, I cleaned them up. I cleaned them up. But normally my fingernails are painted. Okay. My eight year old. She got her second. It arrived today. I ordered it last week. It took a week. Which when you're prime, I've been prime for twelve years. Yeah. That's forever. Uh, but at least you can now, FBA, uh, hazmat products if you're in those programs. So the things are changing so fast mm -hmm. and they're adding new things and it's tough to stay on top of. But I found that I, I'm good at staying on top of these things and when I see something, I'm like, okay, I know who can use this to make money. Okay, so, so, let's, so we got who, FBA, we got widgets. Yeah, you can sell stuff. Amazon sells way more than just books. They sell everything. Yes, everything. So they have the marketplace. They're over 50% now of, uh, of third, of third party. Yeah. And uh, Amazon would be more than happy to have that go up even more. If you think about it, we're holding the bill. Mm -hmm. Amazon gets to sell the stuff and have the increased selection. Customer gets the FBA Prime, you know, Amazon uh, experience with mm -hmm. our inventory. Amazon loves it. Yeah. So, so look, look for that to grow. Uh, I love the self-publishing yeah. with physical books and digital with CreateSpace and Kindle. They're actually putting all the CreateSpace under Kindle now. Yeah. So it's going to be easier to publish. And... Uh, I would say that self-publishing books is the most powerful platform, depending on what you're trying to do. Because writing a book, everybody gets really impressed, mm -hmm. right? If you say, hey, I, I sell toys on Amazon, big deal, right? I published a book, oh, you must be very smart, or yes. you must have an editor. Like, you don't, you can publish mm -hmm. anything. You can publish coloring books, notebooks, like anything. Well, um, and I, I wanna highlight that a little bit, because a lot of people think in order to make money publishing books on Amazon, that it is, you know, let's write the great American novel, oh, it's 10, you know, 60, agent. 80, 100,000 words, but they there's... They need to write the next Harry Potter, right? So when yeah, I right. say publish books, you're just using their printers to print something. You it could, could be print, a journal, it could be writing prompts, it could be a quote every other page, it could be all different things. It could be things. like those music bars, so you sell them to music students over and over yeah. and over mm -hmm. again. Bed and breakfast, they have like those little notebooks that you... You know, you, you say, like, I stayed here on this date, and it was really wonderful, and you leave it there. And, like, you could have one for every state. So, like, yeah. in Massachusetts, it's got, you know, the beach and Newport stuff on it. Like, it's not that hard. You can use the same interior file with a different cover, and you have 50 books, and you can upload them in a weekend. Oh, and then you could send them. What I would do, if we did this, for an example, mm -hmm. I would take those, and I would order your own copies, which they sell at cost, and send them to the bed and breakfast and say, hey, if you'd like, here's a sample and we can customize this for you. And maybe they order one every month. But it has their picture on it, their information, their website, their address. And uh, they'll be like, yeah, let's do that. Because they're not, the bed and breakfast is not gonna all of a sudden start self-publishing their own books. 
So you this can do is it for them. this is so I I want to highlight what you just said because I love this is. You know, a lot of people, they're like, okay, so I can publish books. What am I going to publish? Then that's the next question, right? And you're like, okay, you don't have to publish anything. Here's the thing. Bed and breakfast. That's a niche. Sure. And then take the next step. Order 50 of them. Spend That would be less than $200 to order 50 books yep. that you self-publish. And send them. Give them so away. People, people will... People want to spend marketing dollars differently. Like, like, give the product away. It's still marketing dollars. It is. And, and it's I... reciprocity, mm -hmm. right? Oh, someone sent me a book. They're going to open. It's not junk mail. right? And if you're local, go hand them out. Like, go knock on doors. That would be a great way to start with, you know, the places you can drive to. Right. Take a day and just drive to every bed I like breakfast. finding the demand first instead of, like, making a bed and breakfast book and then hoping someone finds it. Like, be like, right. oh, I bet they could use a bed and breakfast book. And you can even go talk to them first before you even made it, right? You can even take a picture of the bed and breakfast, put it on the you book, and send it, it to up. them. Yeah. yeah. Like, and you could do this for churches. You could do this for for any place. And I love thinking of of the replenishable type stuff. Like, what type of book are people going to use? And then, oh, I need more of that. I need, I've, fin I've filled up this music note writing book. Now I need another one. And in the book, it tells you, do you need another one? Come to my Amazon store or mm -hmm. come to my website and get a coupon and start collecting emails and all these things. So there are all these parts, and that's where I find people get stuck, right? Mm -hmm. That they want to get started, or they, they watch a video, and they're like, I want to make money on Amazon. I saw right. someone selling products. <laughs> and, and they just want to go, go, go. And I, I, I feel, there's two phrases that a lot of people keep saying. They would, they would call me or talk to me and say, I'm ready to go full bore. And I, hate, I just don't like that. <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm ready to get And, and that's, it just never works. Right. I don't know why, but whenever someone does that, it doesn't work. Because it's not just something you can turn on and say, okay, now I'm just going to do all my energy over here. Maybe some people can. In my experience, it doesn't work that way. But they need to understand the, the whole process and mm -hmm. what they're actually doing. Say, okay, I'm going to sell these. Then, like, like, what are you building? Are you trying to build a brand or a company or, or have an email list or, or a customer base? Or, or what are you trying to do? And a lot of them, they just, they've watched one video. They've seen some sensational something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they're just trying to go for it, yeah. which is good. I admire that. But you got to take the right steps. And I, I try to get people on the right track. So I try to see where they're at, where they want to go, what they're good at. Because everybody's good at something. And a lot of people don't realize they're good at something. Or they think they're not good enough at something. And then if you can give them a little bit of confidence that, like, you know, you're really good at that. You should be doing this. And then it's a platform they've never heard of. Right? Whether right. it's self-publishing or graphic design or music or video, they don't realize they can put their videos on Amazon mm -hmm. and tie them back to products. Right? It's like they think, you, they can only put them on YouTube and I'm going to collect pennies on advertising. Uh, you know, one stat, I, I've been telling people lately to take ads off their YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Guess how many, how many hours of videos uploaded to YouTube every minute? I have no idea. 400 hours wow. every minute. Right? So every minute that's being watched, they have a choice. Of 400 hours, right? There's one minute. That's new. That's so, not including all the that's stuff the that was stuff. already there, right? right. right. Every <laughs> minute, that's how much video is being uploaded. So they're watching your video. Be thankful, be happy, and take any barrier out of the. Don't say, now that you're here, you gotta watch my ad because I'm gonna earn half a cent. Forget it. Right. right. Unless you're doing millions and millions of views, you're not. I don't see YouTube ad revenue as the best way to monetize. Well, you know what? I'm gonna say, like, I think, again, it sort of depends. So I, it does. one of the things that you can do on YouTube is you can do like informational videos, how to create create space books on Amazon. Sure. So your goal there is to maybe get people to sign up for your Amazon class. But like there's one channel where this girl, all she does is review makeup. And that, she's, a great, that, uh, she's made a bank with her ads because the ads are very specific for the makeup that she's talking about in her videos right. and her her customer that's watching the video wants to buy makeup so right. it's i think that a like lot women of women are going to have better yeah. options with makeup videos on youtube right because that's what people are watching uh, you know if she's getting the millions of views because i'm sure she's good i'm sure she's right. gone through the learning curve i bet yes. her first video was awful right right and it got better she got better equipment and better lighting and better cameras and better sponsorships and better better quality products to use and just got better at at doing it yeah I would challenge I don't know who this is but I would definitely challenge them to say I bet you can make more money selling your own products mm -hmm. directing people to your own Amazon store versus the ads interesting okay and, and it said if someone wants to do the ads that's fine but I, I'm it's just and maybe I'll change my mind in the future but right now I'm like <laughs> why would you 
put any more barrier up. Like I use YouTube Red now. It's eight bucks a month. I don't watch ads. And when I'm not logged in on that account and an ad comes up, I'm like, holy smokes. Like I'm not watching the ad. I don't even want to wait five minutes to click skip right. the ad. Not five minutes, five seconds. Right. Right? Like that's how much we value our time. And once more and more people that like don't see the ads, then when they see an ad, they're gonna be turned off really mm -hmm. quick. So I can see them if they try it and then they go back and all of a sudden you know, maybe they're not watching that channel as much anymore. So But if she wants to monetize, Amazon gives you so many free options to monetize. Yes. And and what I kinda wanna highlight here is that a lot of times I hear people speak about the thing they want to do. Like, I want to do private label, or I want to do this, or I want to do that. When really what they could be focusing on, on is who is the customer that they're serving. Because that customer, once you start thinking about the customer, then it, then that's where your conversation comes in. Like, well, that customer's annoyed by your ad. Yeah. Or that customer wants to buy your makeup. They don't want to buy Mac. They want to buy Chris's makeup. And right. so when you're... When you're just thinking like, well, I want to do this, and then it's a different focus than when you're trying to understand the whole process. And that's where that thing you're talking about, like with the bed and breakfast, for example, comes in. Because then you're thinking about the customer, like, oh, how does, you know, that bed and breakfast person, how am I going to reach them? And then you, then the, the whole plan becomes a little bit more, it makes more sense. Yeah, I think people could look at it as what abilities and, and capacity do I have when you understand Amazon? And, and that's what... It, doesn't, it frustrates me a little bit when I think people don't realize the, the ability and capacity that they have, right? Yeah. So if we're talking Merch by Amazon. We have access to half million dollar printers. Right. Yep. And, and including the staff and the setup and all mm -hmm. this, it's a million dollar startup that we get to use for, for free, free. Mm -hmm. for the books. It's a five hundred thousand dollar printer that prints a book, drops it out the bottom into a box, and ships it the same day it's ordered. We get to use that for free. We don't have to buy five thousand vanity copies of our book yeah. to, to be a published author. You know, we get to distribute video and, and, and digital music on Amazon for free. And if people like it and download it, we can make money. And then you can say, okay, what can I do with this capacity? Mm -hmm. Because I think like what you've been saying is like people want to do private label. And I think if, if you reverse engineer that, they want to make money. Right. All this is about making money. And they're going to use private label to do that. Mm -hmm. But if they stop and think about what am I good at? What do I want to do? What, what, what am I good at that I can help other people? And say, you know what, I'm good at applying makeup and I can help other people apply makeup. And wait a minute, this private label thing, I could private label my own makeup. Mm -hmm. but wait a minute, I understand this FBA thing. So I can have FBA do the fulfillment. So now I can make YouTube videos instead of ship boxes every day. And I can set something up. But you're setting up six pieces. And you can do a class, an online class. And if you have a private about membership, how to do makeup. you can use Patreon. Yeah. You yeah. Can, it's all that you can have your book. So you can tie all these things together. And that's where people get lost because they got six pieces they got to use. They got the one that they like. They got the one that they're learning. They got the other four that they're never going to get to. Mm -hmm. So they, they need someone to come in. That's where I feel I help the most people. And it's not that I do it for money. I do this all for free. I say, look, you guys need to do this, 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 and this. Tie this all together. And hopefully, like the, the players who win are the ones who, who commit and, and do it all, or they get help, or they get a partner. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people try to do it on their own. I'm probably guilty of some of it mm -hmm. myself. Instead of saying, "Look, I need to, you know, this is what I'm good at. I need to find someone who's good at this part." And uh, it's like the Shark Tank thing. You want to have like half of something that sells versus all of something that doesn't sell. Uh, I see I have a lot of people try to have 100 yep. percent of nothing <laughs> because they like making YouTube videos. They think they're a star, but they're they're trying to learn private label but they don't understand FBA, they don't understand Patreon or Udemy or all these other things. And if, if you're actually good at something, and that's why I want to give people confidence, like whatever they're good at, they are good at it. They say, well, I'm not as good as like Casey Neistat. Well, yeah, sorry, no, you're not. But you don't have to be Casey Neistat to provide you know, video value to other people. You know? So, I don't even know who that is. I'm such a dork. He was like the YouTuber of the year. Okay. You know? <laughs> he, he makes, he's a vlogger, he makes great videos. He makes, and, okay. And uh, you know a lot of a lot of YouTubers look up to him, mm -hmm. and they try to emulate some of his style. And, and, and he's brought he's like elevated the uh, the production quality for for vlogs on YouTube, and, okay. it, and it, it's a good thing. Um, but people can provide their own unique value, and I, I think a lot of people need to realize they don't need to to cater to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, like in in the Amazon world, it, it's there has been a lot of a lot of guys, right? It's been, been kind of male dominated. Mm -hmm. And I've been encouraging every woman who shows any interest, like, please, please, you guys all need to fight to be the first lady of FBA, right? <laughs> the first lady of Amazon, right? Because there are, there are people who would rather watch a video of a woman talking about Amazon and FBA. So do it, right? Like, why say, why, do, like, why not get in? 
and, and help these people and say, well, you know, you, they can watch your videos. Yeah, but they don't care about my videos. And if they want to say it because he's a guy and I don't want to watch a video by a guy, that's fine. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But you can help people. And if you, if you just look for ways to help you, and, and my easiest way for people that want to like make extra money, find ways to help other people make money. Yeah. And people will listen. And if you know what you're doing, it's like, oh, okay, this person's interesting. Oh, he's got like 800 different ways to make money. They're going to listen. And all you're doing is helping other people make money. So it's a, it's a very like low stress, you know, it's, it's just fun. I mean, the stress comes when, when people don't do what you suggest. Right. And they come back. Well, did you do what I suggested? Well, no. Well, mm -hmm. well go do it because it was good. Right. It was good advice. <laughs> you know? But, you know, like some people take longer to get started, and that's okay. But Okay, so let's go back to our list. We've got widgets, KV, Kindle Publishing, merch. I, I group everything in, into three Okay. Three big things. So you've got selling. Okay. Right? So you're selling a physical product, which is include, including any type of sourcing, Retail, online, private label, wholesale, China, like you're selling physical stuff, product. Stuff, okay. Um, then you've got stuff like creating. Mm -hmm. And you, that's going to include stuff like Merch by Amazon, where you're doing t-shirts and hoodies and cell phone cases and all these other things. You've got Kindle and you've got CreateSpace. Um, you know, in Create, you could also probably put in some Amazon Custom, some Amazon Handmade. Mm -hmm. that's, that's selling with creation a little bit. I like those because you can take orders without having to like, make stuff first. Like, yeah. i got to order. Okay, we gotta make, make it. We gotta make it. Ship it today. Like, yeah. Amazon wants you to have it in stock, but you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to be the Amazon police. <laughs> Just make sure you ship on time. And then, uh, and I call it support and services. So if you can understand, and it's not that you just have to go like, I'm gonna go help sellers. If you understand selling, then you know their pain points. You know what can what can help them. You know what you could do to help them, and then you can help. You can make programs. You can make memberships. You can make extensions. You can make apps. You can just make lists. and I think more people who don't live near like a retail store should be sitting at home doing wholesale sourcing and selling lists to top wholesalers on Amazon. Right. And say, I sat at home on the phone for three hours. I found these great products, and I want $1,000 for this list because these products are good. Mm -hmm. And sell that list to five people. And if you're good enough, maybe you're just going to become a, a wholesale sourcer for one big Amazon seller. And you mm -hmm. can stay at home. And if you're good enough, make a hundred grand. If you bring more than hundred hundred thousand dollars worth of value to that company, you can stay at home. And if you're good enough, in two hours a day, you can make six figures at home. But it's about the, the biggest thing you need to do there is understand Amazon, understand wholesale, and understand numbers. And I, I like to try to help people get because people are like, well, how do I do that? How do I do that? Well, start by making a list. Right here's practical, real information. Right. Start by making a list. Go into a Facebook group. If you're new, talk to the admin first, so you're not just like pimping and, and selling and doing all this stuff like self promo stuff. And say, look, I made this list. I, I'd love to give it away and get some feedback. Give it away. And if the feedback comes back and says, uh, yeah, this isn't very good. Okay. Feedback. Get better. Mm -hmm. right? They're like, hey, this is really great. Can we work together? That's it. Give it to the admin for free too. Right? Like, it's not that hard. And maybe you get like three no's. Well, go for the next one. Go for mm -hmm. the next one. You know how many FBA groups there are now? You know, <laughs> we had like the first two. Yeah. There's, there's probably four or five hundred of them. Yeah. You know, like it's not hard to find people online talking about FBA. There's a really good quote from Babe Ruth that is, every strike brings me closer to the next home run. Yeah, that's the law of averages. Yeah. yeah, and so that's what he said, like, and I think so many people get stuck in their strikes. They do. They no one likes to fail. Nope. Um, but, but you got to, it's like, who cares? <laughs> you know, like, it is some of that. Because, like, people, they, they worry about what other people think or what other people are going to say. And if you're hanging out with people who are going to give you a hard time, like, you got to hang out with different people. Like, if they're not there to help you, like, there's a difference between, it's not criticism and hate, but, like, if, if someone's, if you do something, like, and they, they help you get back up or they, they laugh at you. And if you're hanging out with people who laugh at you, really, you have to stop hanging out with them. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just depressing to think that people are doing that. Um, but you got to be able to take, like, good feedback. So if someone says, yeah, that, remember we told you that was a bad idea? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you guys were right. Like, yeah. those are your friends. Just because they didn't like your idea doesn't mean they, they, weren't, they weren't your friends. Yes. So you can find a, you know, it is important to find a, a good, trustworthy support group online. Yes. Because a lot of these entrepreneurs, especially around Amazon, it's pretty isolating. It's yeah. hard to find someone local. Your friends, your family, they don't understand what we do. They don't believe it works. They think we, we don't, like, they don't, I don't know what they think we actually do. But they don't think we actually do, like, big business. So that's another, I think, another good point you're making is 
this can be a very isolating thing. Being an entrepreneur in general can be very isolating. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand why you're not just going to get a job or whatever. And then if you're working in a digital environment, an online environment, it's even more isolating. Yeah. And so some people can do that. They can sit in front of a computer for 10 hours and feel awesome. But other people, they need people to brainstorm. And so if you are in a group or in a local group or an online group or wherever you're at, finding other sellers that you can have an actual connection with. Oh, incredibly valuable. Yeah. Probably one of the most valuable. And I, I think I gave that piece of advice. It's probably the most common piece of advice I gave during my series of coaching calls. was like, you got to find, mm -hmm. like, this is one of your goals, is you need to find at least four or five other people to make like a little mastermind, someplace where you can be open and transparent, people you trust. Not, yeah. I have this product that's in this category, but actually people you trust yeah. so much that you, you can tell them you the product. Open the rain code and show them the goods. Yeah, yeah. think about this so that you can get real feedback. Mm -hmm. And it's, there is, I don't know if it's like the paranoia. There is a lot of paranoia with Amazon sellers. Yeah. And I wish they would just get over it. You know, it's yeah. like that in many industries. But yeah, yeah. I know. But they, once they see the value of getting mm -hmm. over it, because it's like if you have five people and you share one thing and everybody shares one thing, well, now you have five times as many things. Like it's not... It's not you giving up something and not, nothing in return, but it's, you have to, I mean, I can't make people do these things. I think they should. Uh, when you have an idea and you brainstorm with somebody, the idea gets better yeah. because they think of something you didn't thought of. Mm -hmm. That happened today. I mean, I'm not going to yeah. say exactly what it was today. Uh, but I was what? Like, You're not going to tell us the exact thing? <laughs> well, it had to do with <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, well, I mean, I, I can't. I mean, it's, no, it's, it's a, not it's a secret. Okay. Uh, it would just be too long to go into. Yeah. But it's, I mean, that's why I'm open with this stuff because mm -hmm. like, because I work with people I trust. And at the same time, I've also worked with people who stab me in the back. But it, it's a numbers game. Like it's law of averages. If you work with enough people, you will work with someone who stabs you in the back. But the, the fear of never, never being stabbed in the back or never having a bad relationship or having something end badly is, is so small compared to the benefit of everything else. So you can't live in fear of, well, someone might stab me in the back, so I'm never, I'm never gonna make a friend because I might. Right. We might not be friends later. Like, you can't. And the other, the other thing I think that happens, and a lot of people don't, don't trust this process, but once you start having ideas for businesses, for an entrepreneurial thing, and you start being in a positive, it's almost like a greenhouse. Like more and more things grow, more and yeah. more ideas. And so, you know, I have business ideas all the time. I cannot possibly pursue all those ideas. So if I tell you that idea, and then you pursue it, Yay, you right. had an idea that I had, and great, you're doing it. And so, but people, I think people are like, oh, no, no, this product or this whatever, oh, this is mine, you know, instead they think of. They're the grave. Right. So, another thing would be to have abundance with, like, you trust that your ideas are going to keep flowing. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's 2017. There are more ideas. Like, it's, it, it's almost problematic. Right. I call it like the entrepreneur's curse uh -huh. because there are so many options. And, and I, I kind of think of it like, like a Venn diagram, right? So you got all the stuff over here that makes money. And some things over here make more money than others. And I think everything over here is fun. And some things are more fun than others. And there's an overlap. And right. some things make money and are fun. But they make, you know, sometimes you're like, ah, I want to make more money. Well, I got to do something that's not as fun. Then. Well, I want to have some more fun. Well, it might make less money. But there's so many things here in, in both. You got to decide what you want to do, and you have to be okay with not doing the other things, which is one right. reason why we That's give tough. our ideas away. Yeah. Like, I'd rather somebody do it. Right. But then when people say, oh, you told me this idea freely, you're not doing it yourself, so maybe you don't actually think it's a good idea. And I'm like, no, it's a great idea. You just don't have time to do it. <laughs> right. I can't it's do It's just not everything. my idea for me to do right now. No, yeah. And everybody has these ideas. So everybody right. goes down the list and is like, you know, I want to make an app for this. People ask, well, we could make an app for this. I was like, well, you could. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what's involved in this, this. Like, it, it's a big project. You can do it if you want. Just because I don't do it doesn't mean it's not a good idea. Right. Uh, so people got to got to find out what they're good at, what their strengths are, uh, where they're at, where they want to go, and then how they want to get there. So it's, it's all these pieces they got to put together. And there's when well, there's so many options, I mean, I'm an economics major, so I studied all these things through school. Uh, you know, choice will make you miserable. More choice mm -hmm. is not better. You know, more choice leads to indecision. So we have all these choices of businesses. We just, just selling. Do you want to do retail arbitrage, online arbitrage? Do you want to do wholesale? Do you want to be private label? Do you want, like, which one do you want to do? Do you try to do all of them? I wouldn't. Well, um, one of the things that uh, I encourage people to do is to 
to do one thing and then even if that's not your thing you'll learn something from that thing yeah. and that may lead you you're not gonna it's kind of like walking on a path made out of rocks you can't get to the last rock without going on all the other rocks along the way and business ideas can be like that as well and business yeah, you'll pursuits. learn things from each thing you know if you try to build a, a website funnel you're like, Ooh, I don't know what I'm doing, but you can learn something. And then, mm -hmm. like, might be a year later, you're like, you know what? We should put a funnel on this. Right. Like, oh, now I know how to do that. And there's, there's just all these parts, you know. So there's so many things. All right, we need to wrap up our interview because you and I are going on and on about all we the wonderful things. We can go on things. and things. We can keep going. <laughs> but so there's, there's two really key components I heard you talk about. One is learn about your own strengths. And then the other is be open to all the different ways you can express those. I think so. I, I think people need and, to... And learn about, you know, how to do it. I would encourage people to read as much as they can. Mm -hmm. You know, join groups where they, they talk about entrepreneur type ideas so you can be exposed to a lot of these things. Uh, understand that whatever you're good at, like, like actually believe that you're good and you can provide value to other people. And, and then find ways to... To kind of build a business and monetize it, not just for the sake of monetization, but this is a thing from Amazon. Everybody thinks Amazon is customer focused and customer first, which they are. But there's something actually above that. Mm -hmm. They have to stay in business, right? Because they don't stay in business, they can't help their customers, right? So yes, you have to monetize to to be able to stay in business and keep helping people. Mm -hmm. So that's the business that you want to be in. Uh, and then there's so many different ways to monetize. And I encourage more people to monetize themselves than to look for YouTube ads or to just be an affiliate. I mean, affiliate marketing is great if that's what you want to do. But, like, why not make your own stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. why affiliate for this book when you could write your own book? Why put up an affiliate for someone else's shirt when you can sell your own shirt? Like, that's it. Like, affiliate for, for the makeup instead of private label your own makeup. Right. Like, 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 yoga pants. I mean, like, anybody who's doing, like, fitness stuff should have, like, what, you mean I can put my own logo on your logo? Someone should take their yoga pants and find a yoga... YouTuber and say, look, I'll put your logo on yoga pants, put them on Amazon, I'll sell them, but I'll give you 30%, you just send a link, mm -hmm. right? Because you know how FBA works, you know how YouTube works, the YouTuber's like, I just have to promote your link and I'm going to get 30%, it's even got my logo on it? Like, yeah, that's a good deal. It's yeah. a win-win for everybody. And it's, it's just silly things like that where it's like, you find the needs and you know how to connect these dots. Mm -hmm. And it's there's so much out there. So it is overwhelming. So when people feel overwhelmed, that's okay. We're, we've all been there. Right. Find some good, good, you know, trustworthy people to hang out with. Ask some questions. Take some chances. Fail fast. Fail yeah. cheap. And you're gonna find that the law of averages is gonna start kicking in. You're gonna be like, hey, I failed five times, and now I found a winner. Okay. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's fun. Hi, and welcome to the Scanner Society. We are a chamber of commerce for online selling entrepreneurs. Our members sell on Amazon, Jet, eBay, and beyond. We are brand builders and marketplace merchants, side hustlers and full-timers who simply want to help each other. Join and connect at live events and online. We leverage the power of a large group to bring deals and resources to our members. You can save money with our discounts and learn in our interviews. You will also enjoy our safe zone, which is free of affiliate marketing and the guru mentality. We offer a 60-day money-back guarantee, so join today and become a part of Community Connected Commerce.